Hi, I'm Daryl Cagle, and this is the Cagle Cast, where we're all about political cartoons. And today our topic is Fox News. And we have four brilliant cartoonists joining me today to talk about Fox News. Gentlemen, it's great to see you all. It's good hey, to Darryl. be here. So, Pat. Bagley is the brilliant cartoonist for the Salt Lake Tribune in Utah since 1979. And Pat has won a ton of awards, including the Herblock Award. And he's also a shining star in our profession. And Pat, this is one of yours. Yes, it definitely is one of mine. Well, I thought this was great. He's puffing on the right wing media glue. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, you know, you do this kind of thing, it just rots your brain. And if you open Fox News or Sinclair News or Limbaugh or InfoWars, any kind of stuff, it just is brain rot. That was the idea of the cartoon. Well, also, Fox News is kind of a soap opera cesspool of sexual harassment and crazy big egos and lies and lawsuits and just huge, crazy, nasty stories. There's something in that glue. I noticed they're they're toning things down a bit now after their voting machine lawsuits. They're correcting things on the air now. They're Really, it seems to be like they're just as crazy and terrible as ever. Well, I've seen a couple, like we actually, I don't actually have Fox, but I've seen clips where they're actually coming on and saying, oh, actually, President Trump did not win the election. You know, they'll have to correct a a guess or something. So, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. they don't. Like they're more arrogant than ever, particularly that new guy, Jesse Waters. Oh, well, Waters. My skin. But Dave, they don't allow Fox North at the border. Well, you, you know, know what? I don't know if that's true anymore. At one point, we couldn't get Fox, but now it's not part of the regular cable package. And I have quite a few channels and it's not on there so Mm. i I think you can get it if you want to oh interesting yeah so once we get it up here then we'll be shifting fully over to insanity too i'm sure so (laughs) i thought this was a great one you get the supply chain starting with fox news going to the emergency room and straight to the mortuary what did you have in mind on this one this was in 21 after the covid epidemic had been running over a year then you start to get this vaccine skepticism you know saying that it's probably deep state conspiracy and 5G microchips, it's just crazy stuff. So Fox News is suggesting to their viewers that maybe they shouldn't be getting vaccines. So that leads to people not getting vaccinated, leading to getting sick, leading to dying. And COVID is still with us, it's still out there. The last time I looked at the statistics, red states, red counties are dying at twice the rate than anybody else because we accepted this anti-vaccine and you've got a measles outbreak. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Florida, which is absolutely crazy. Hey, you put a lot of the blame for that on Fox? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and let me interject really quick. Can we go back, Daryl? It's no small task to get a building, a hospital, and a mortuary all within one frame in one cartoon. And uh, I think that was oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and worker Matt Matt does that well too with oh yeah with buildings. Thank yeah. you, thank you very much. I thought this one was great fun, Pat. You've got Rupert Murdoch, the vulture, feeding his babies with all of his news vomit. I think that's fun. Although I see now that it was in Spanish, but an excellent cartoon. Oh, it is in Spanish. It is in Spanish. Uh, Why isn't it Spanish? Yeah. Well, we do Spanish cartoons, and I grabbed the wrong cartoon, but it's excellent in <laughs> no, Spanish. No, no, no. I mean, it's 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 clear what it's saying. Yeah. That, uh, Rupert Murdoch is the brains behind Fox News, News Corp, and the Sun British tabloid, and it's vomiting up all this nonsense. Who vote? What's the state? Well, Trump. 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 Trump, uh, <laughs> Tweety Trump, <laughs> vomiting into Fox News. That's I, a full-on exorcist vomit there. So. That is really <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it's not cute we cartoon go? vomit. It's not cute cartoon <laughs> it, vomit. It's- yeah. So the thing about Rupert Murdoch is that any country where he's got a foothold, their politics goes absolutely crazy and nuts. Rupert Murdoch has a presence in Australia, they have a presence in Britain, they have a presence in the United States. Not in Canada, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but in all those countries, right-wing craziness destroyed the politics. I think, though, that Rupert deserves a pass on all that because he was the guy that first hired Pat Oliphant, apparently. Oh. <laughs> so he gave us uh, Pat Oliphant in one hand and then Donald Trump in the other, so. Yeah. Well, and don't, don't forget the Simpsons. <laughs> You know, this is something, something yeah. on uh, yeah. Matt Groening's conscience. I don't know how he feels about <laughs> being a cornerstone of the Murdoch empire, but that's true. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. So Steve Breen is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner for the nonprofit news website 
iNews source, and he drew for the San Diego Union Tribune for 22 years, and he writes and draws children's books. Great to have you here, Steve. Oh, hello. Thank you. Well, this is Tucker Carlson, obviously. And, and you he know, got that I, exclusive on the video from the Capitol and he edited it to make it look like these were nice patriots on vacation. Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think I was just pressed for time this day and I just grabbed the photo and, and went from there. We actually did a whole podcast on Tucker Carlson. He's such a rich subject. Well, yeah, right. And anytime anyone just deals in craziness and absolutes, they're such a great target. I was just ludicrous what he was saying about the January 6th maniacs at the Capitol. So this one wrote itself. The also, the way that he was fired that shows that they really don't have very much equity in their, their big ego positions at Fox. Any of them could get canned at any minute. Yeah. It, it was a stunning fall from grace, though. I mean, he was their golden boy. And then the next minute, like a week later, he was gone. You know? Did any of you think that had to do with the billion dollar lawsuit that they lost? Is that one of the conditions? I think it was that his <laughs> emails right that got out as part of the lawsuit that made him look duplicitous. That he was turned into a liability in that week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money talks. Here's another one from you, Steve. You've got Rupert Murdoch. He says pets are expensive, and he was as bad as the fox. Of course, the fox <laughs> is on his leash. Yeah, I guess if you look at his empire, the fox <laughs> has brought the most damage, or some of the most damage. Yeah, Rupert is great to draw with all that extra skin hanging everywhere. <laughs> well, let's move on to Dave Womond. Dave Womond is an incredibly prolific cartoonist. He draws two comics, Reality Check and Day by Dave. And Dave is also a prolific illustrator. He does puzzles, greeting cards, and lots of top-selling children's books. Great to have you here, Dave. Thanks for having me. So tell us about the Fox News dumpster next to the so toilet. I, I think this is right around the time when CNN hired Chris Light, and he was trying to make the transition to... Uh, a move to the right, and uh, he kind of did it in a fast way right at the start, fired a bunch of the uh, usual hosts, and they were saying some things that their viewers weren't weren't liking very much, so I thought, hey, they're trying to top Fox News, hold my beer, jump right in. <laughs> That's fun. And here you've got Rupert in the, <laughs> the burning dumpster, firing my, poor Tucker. <laughs> my dumpster humor. Do you see a pattern here? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I like Tucker. He's always got that perpetual, confused, uh, like you're trying to explain Russia in algebra to a five-year-old or something he's kind of got that that look all the time that deer in the head headlights thing so he's fun to draw and of course rupert as you said with the wrinkles and sagging skin he's perfect too so lots of fun to draw it's fun so matt worker is a Pulitzer prize and her block prize winning cartoonist for politico where he also edits a great weekly roundup of editorial cartoons and he's the president of the cartoonist rights network international does a wonderful job of offering support to cartoonists around the world who are in danger because of the cartoons they drew. Great to have you here, Matt. Thanks, Daryl. So tell us about this one. This is fun. This is fairly straightforward. You know, we had to go with the brainwash metaphor and foxitis. Cranium cleansing foxitis. Okay, so Matt, Matt, is, is the cap is that the Jefferson Memorial? What? The cap on the... On oh, the my thing? God. Oh, I think it is. <laughs> it is. Just me, yeah. yes. <laughs> only, only, only a cartoonist would... would yeah, or that or the Parthenon. I don't know. That's the Pantheon. No, oh, yeah, the Pantheon. Exactly. I, okay, here you go. It. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You were talking no, about just, the Jefferson Memorial. Only a cartoonist would catch that sort of thing or, or subconsciously do it. But I'm terribly sophisticated and I try to work <laughs> monuments and architectural tales in all the cartoons. And I, like, so, so. I think that the uh, pink cherry blossoms around it, are. that's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> See? See, I'm invoking Washington. So why the Jefferson Memorial? Because attempting to contain the contagion of Fox Side, it's the... It's democracy fighting back against Fox. Okay. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing. It's it's nothing that sophisticated or right. or union or anything like that. But it, it, nice detail. So Matt, here you've got flooding the zone with the January sixth committee hearings and Fox and MAGA media blasting it with all of this nonsense. I think that's great. It looks like fun. Thanks, thanks. Now I try to I try to like throw some color and stuff and keep it somewhat on the light side, even though a lot of these topics are heavy and you, you don't want to trivialize too much. But this is the uh, the Fox playbook, which is the Steve 
Bannon playbook, which is just flood the zone with the noise and bunk and all sorts of distractions when there's something going on. And that was going on big time during the January mm -hmm. hearings. Yeah. So, yeah. I, sure. I think cartoonists do society a service when we trivialize these things. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one from you, Matt. But here we have Tucker's Tasty BS. He says, I know it's complete BS, but hey, they gobble it up. It's, they're eating their Swanson's TV dinner. So this is great. Yeah, yeah. And a nod to Tucker being a trust fund kid from the Swanson's dynasty. So I, I managed, I was happy that I got to fit that in. Oh, I, I was didn't surprised know that. actually that my, my editors let me, uh, that's where he got, he's really rich. He was rich before Fox. He was rich before Crossfire. You know, a real man of the people born with a few million dollars in a trust fund. Well, I used to love TV dinners. I was raised on them. I know. I know. Salisbury stays. The kids today don't appreciate Salisbury stays. My first experience with tater tot. Mm -hmm. And then there's that little dessert square, too. You can't forget about yeah. that. <laughs> so this Audrey 2 cartoon is wonderful, Matt. You've got a big Trump Audrey 2 about to gobble up the Republicans. This is great. I'm so glad you picked this one because this is one of my favorite Trump cartoons. And I've got probably hundreds of them. This one I did in teen when Trump basically secured the uh, nominee nomination at the convention. It's a reminder, I'm bringing this back to Fox News in some ways, but it's a reminder that the, the MAGA phenomenon goes back to the Tea Party phenomenon, really. Yep. And it's the culmination of when Obama was elected in 2008, a Pandora's box was opened. And it was, to be frank, a lot of racist anxiety about the first black president, I think. Free, there was a national freak out. And the Republican establishment, led by Fox News, spent eight years demonizing, birtherizing Barack Obama. And eight years of that sort of toxic messaging led basically softened up the ground for the, for MAGA and Donald Trump. So it's sort of, it, you know, that there are a lot of people in Washington talk about how Trump desire to run for president goes back to being humi humiliated by Obama. Do you remember mm -hmm. that at the White House Correspondents' yep. Dinner and stuff? So Trump is so tied up in the Obama moment in American history. And I think as, as time moves on, we'll have a better sense of they're, they're interconnected. It was a push that was met by another push. And then we ended up with this sort of descent down this rabbit hole that the country's been going through. And since we just got through Super Tuesday, the question is, do we go back down the rabbit hole? Well, I think there's a lovely metaphor because the, the whole story is about how lovingly you uh, nurture and fertilize and tend to this plant until it comes back to bite you. <laughs> yeah. But all of that, you know, the birtherism, it's like the, the fertilizer for this plant goes back to all the crap that they unloaded on Obama and that fertilized this toxic plant and then they got consumed by it so here you've got the maga industries and the gaslight factory and the big lie i yeah, i like yeah. that you have all of the labels in here this is a label cartoon but the labels are what are what's fun about it yeah yeah thanks no sometimes you have to resort to labels but well, it's we, more, you know, more more toxicity on an industrial scale here. Cartoonists talk to each other about how they try to avoid labels, but sometimes labels are fun. Yeah, and you got to name names too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah, I like that you with the the big lie coming in with the black background. I think a lot of cartoonists would have gone the other way and done the black smoke with a white background, but it's a kind of a nice spin on it. It really pops out that way. Oh yeah, yeah. The black yeah. background black. makes it ominous. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sort of my intent. Gets a whole mood to it. So, so here we've More got fast food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mega King King Whopper. The Whopper, the Big Lie Burger, over <laughs> 72 million con to stop the steel hang pants, Mega, Mega King. This is a great fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't don't miss out on the uh, dupe dogs in the window offered. Also, the filet o chump. Excellent. <laughs> That's supposed to be Giuliani handing them. Out. <laughs> they do serve it up fast. They do. They do. It's so okay. here we got one from Adam Ziglis. I, I batched some big lies together. You got the January 6th commission cutting down the cherry tree of Trump's Pinocchio nose. It says, if a tree falls in a forest and Fox News viewers aren't around to hear it, does it make a sound? Which I think is a kind of a disturbingly true point. No, it, it, we're seeing it now with Fox News. Viewers don't hear about Trump trying to be a dictator. They have no well, they're not even, that. They're not hearing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, even when he sat down at an interview with, I think it was Brett Bear or somebody, he was trying to steer him away from saying that because it's yeah. like he said, well, you don't really mean you're going to be a, a dictator. And then Trump <laughs> picked up on it. He's like, well, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe them, really. Yeah. So here's Ed Wexler's big lie. You know, we did a whole podcast on toilets and Trump, and people were into toilets and Trump. Uh, <laughs> but when 
the regular old cartoonist tries to get a newspaper editor to print a poop cartoon. They just don't get me printed. <laughs> editors don't like poop. Editors don't. You know, and the English love the poop. I'm very jealous of the, our English compatriots because they can draw all the poop that they want. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, Martin Rosen, who draws for The Guardian, who draws a lot of poop in his cartoons, Quite effectively and quite beautifully, he refers to it as the fecal imperative, which sounds even better with an English accent. So here's Andy Singer. This is another one that we would have trouble getting editors to print. Yeah. And we've got mm -hmm. uh, uh, Fox News flipping the bird to the Fox News viewer, which is more, I think, a matter of the attitude that they have about their viewers. But I thought this was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Cartoonists have a kind of uh, macho attitude. We want to draw the harder hitting cartoons and then we have to get pushed back by the editors. And that's always frustrating. Mm. I'm almost wondering his uh, expressions, almost like he's offended. I think the Fox viewers would, if you're going to fully make fun of it, they would be happily consuming it. I think a very large part of what Fox is all about is fear. fear they want their white suburban rural audience to be afraid of all these terrible cultural and racial things that are happening around them. And it's fear that sells. I agree. But what follows on that is hate. They have to hate mm -hmm. somebody. If they're going to be afraid, mm -hmm. if somebody's making them afraid, they're going to hate that. Mm -hmm. It's diversity, equity, and inclusion that is making them afraid. They're going to hate it. It's just nonsense. So this is one of my cartoons. I have Fox saying, be afraid. And I have the old couple who's watching it. One says, I need to go buy gold. The other one says, I need to go buy adult diapers. You know, the, the commercials on Fox are just as crazy and defining of their audience. The, the catheters and the pillow guy and Fox News doesn't stop when the commercials start. Yeah, no, it's true. I think the uh, average age of the Fox viewer is about 99. And, uh, <laughs> so it, it, there, there's that silver lining. I mean, I think it's actually <laughs> true. I think that the, the average viewer, I think, is uh, somewhere in their 60s. So maybe the well, that's will true of off. newspaper readers and editorial cartoon readers as well. Yeah, and editorial cartoonists too. <laughs> yes, a problem that we grapple with. Yeah. Here's Ed Wexler <laughs> with Trump as the kid in Poltergeist transfixed by the evil spewing out of Fox News. And I just love it when cartoonists draw caricatures of the backs of people's heads. I, I think there's just something so elegant about a caricature from the back of somebody's head. That's a beautiful caricature. Mm -hmm. And Trump does have a very recognizable back of his head, the way he swoops his hair back. And Ed did a mm -hmm. nice job there capturing that. Oh, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we have Engelhart, and the doctor is uh, mm -hmm. talking to Uncle Sam in front of the X-Men machine. He says, you have cancer. The cancer is Fox News, of course, in his colon. I liked this one, too. Fox News is kind of a cancer eating up America. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think you can trace the bright red line. You can trace the trust in American institutions that make us a country in 1996 when Fox News was first established. Because you start in 1996, and they said, we are giving you the truth. We're going to tell you the truth. But they're doing it by undermining every other institution that makes it the democracy. They've undermined the press, and they're the press too. <laughs> they're a big part of the media, but they're undermining uh, the judiciary. They're undermining Congress. They're un talking about the deep, deep state all the time. And it's because Fox News is just cancerous. It is cancerous. Yeah. And a lot of times, something that's in the news, like when they're doing the January 6 hearings, I guess on Fox, they're they're showing something about radon in your home or something. Just the whole fear thing again. It's like, this is what we're focused on. We're not going to talk about what's going on with the January 6 hearings. Here's uh, Randy Enos. He's got Fox News farting. And uh, <laughs> Fox News viewers are uh, uh, suffering from stench. I God, I've never seen a cartoon fart quite like that. <laughs> I get it. All right. This is also Randy. He's got uh, Fox News I guess vomiting out the happy Fox News viewers that are sitting in the pungent spew. Not, Not a lot of drawing. subtlety here. No. Here is shot from the Netherlands, and he's got Fox News leading all of the headless chickens. I kind of liked this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. I would have given them red neck stubs, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe without that, the editors liked it better. Yeah. Editors don't <laughs> like blood. Here's Jimmy Margulies, garbage in, garbage out, Fox News, and the mega guy that results from it. Um, 
I have noticed when we have uh, our conservatives on the podcast or talking to conservatives, the thing that annoys them most is the disrespect they get from the liberal cartoonists drawing the very good, law-abiding, nice MAGA people as stupid. Our, our, our job as cartoonists is to caricaturize people, though, and you know, you see some of them on TV and it's harder to caricaturize them because they're already sort of walking caricature. So, so, so Steve, yeah. Steve Breen is probably the most conservative cartoonist among us right now. And I want to know, are we being unfair? Is it- no, I, not, not in my estimation. And I've, even though I'm conservative, I've, I've gotten that too from, even from family members offended at mm-hmm. my depiction of MAGA people and people who don't, you know, want the vaccine during COVID. You know, I was pro-vaccine and I'm anti-Trump, even though I'm conservative. So you can be both. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I guess I'm I'm concerned. I mean, everything's a spectrum. Everything's relative. Right. So on the on on the spectrum, these issues have kind of warped me. And now to those people, I look like a liberal. Hmm. But I think the whole the whole Trump movement, I don't think is uh, conservative really anymore, is it? You know, well, I was thinking of you, Steve, as kind of moderate. Yeah, I I think I'm I'm moderate. I don't think I've changed on the issues, right? Like nope. it's not like mm-hmm. I've become more moderate. I think I've always been the same, but I guess I look more moderate because of the way the country's going. Yeah. Well, and you're not alone too. I mean, look at Ramirez and Rick McKee mm-hmm. and other people that I think of as like prominent strong conservatives who got off the Trump train years ago too. Yeah. I know mm-hmm. I was really uh, proud of Ramirez for taking that stand. I would not have guessed he would have. I would have no. guessed that he would have been all in on Trump. Would it be interesting to see if he's paid a price in sort of conservative media? Because he was definitely a darling in the conservative media. I wonder if he's paid a professional price for not going along with the crowd. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I wonder. Well, um, there are new extra conservative cartoonists who seem to fill the gap. So it's not hard to find it. OK, so I've got a few uh, Hannity cartoons here. And they, uh, they really do drink each other's Kool-Aid. <laughs> this is Steve Sack. God, oh, I love that. <laughs> Steve Sack. And Steve Breen, here's another one of yours, who says, my vaccine position is unclear, says Fuzzy Hannity. I thought his vaccine position was pretty outrageously clear, along with the rest of Fox. They were quite disturbing on that. Yeah, this was done maybe in, in, a, in, a, in a moment there when he was saying, kind of talking out of two sides of his mouth. Okay. Pat, here's one of yours. You got Hannity and the guy at, with this candle at the mirror. He says... Chant Hunter's laptop three times and proof of Joe Biden's crimes will magically appear. (laughs) (laughs) Nice caricature. Thank you. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. And you're supposed to be, I don't know, (laughs) something. (laughs) And Dave, here's one of your Hannity cartoons. You've got the Fox News machine. You pour in Mark Meadows' used personal emails to assist in coup attempt. And out of Hannity's mouth comes... They found Hillary's emails on Hunter Biden's laptop. I think that's fun. Good looking whenever, machine. Whenever I can get an excuse to draw a Rube Goldberg contraption, I take them always at the ready. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun to draw. And Hannity at the end, I, that was kind of fun having him belt showed as all the lies and nonsense that come up. It is a lot of nonsense. Pat, I like this one. They're they're wearing their COVID masks over their eyes as they're hearing all this Trump nonsense about January 6th. Okay, it's a little busy. Little No, it's not busy enough. <laughs> okay, spend a little time with it and it comes. I, well. I like the contrast though. It's super busy on the, the left and simple on the right. Fox News just didn't cover any of this so it's, uh, they were blind to it so this is from rj matson the january 6 committee hearings and uh, the republican <laughs> elephant putting himself into his fox news bubble so none of that has to get through to him that's beautiful it is yeah I, i've never i've never seen something like that drawn before that's great that is- yeah you know don't, don't don't you get metaphor envy when somebody does something like that yeah it's like, <laughs> <"Damn."> <laughs> totally so here's chris wyant uh, in the bar the bartender has this uh, TV on and says, which coverage of the impeachment hearings do you want to watch? The ones where Trump's guilty or the ones where Trump's innocent? <laughs> it's, uh, the truth changes from channel to channel. So I think I think some of us anyway are old enough to remember the Watergate hearing, right? And if there had been a Fox News back in that time, Nixon would still probably be, be alive, probably still be president. Remember when Obama's tan suit was the biggest... Uh thing going on in the news for weeks and ah, this simple times hey eh? good old day <laughs> so here you've got ed wexler with another ostrich cartoon with the fox news couple the one's hiding his head in the 
the ground says credible witness, schmedible witness. So I don't see that Trump committed any crimes. The wife says, <laughs> neither do I. Here's MAGA guys watching Fox News says, I've been lying to you. And he says, I don't believe that. You know, they do admit that they were lying with all that lawsuit stuff, but they admit it for about 20 seconds. And then all the rest of the day, you never hear it again. And even yeah. when the judgment came out, they I think they at first didn't announce the amount of the judgment or, or it was kind of like, and we were fined 300 million, like, you know, they, <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't admit how much they, they lost in the lawsuit. And all their crazy incriminating emails that they were reading on all the other channels never found any voice on Fox. The terrible emails really spelled out everything that they are. Here, Pat, you have Tucker and Hannity and Murdoch, and they're saying we need to lie about election fraud to keep our audience and the audience says you get me yeah <laughs> it was great thank you <laughs> they they lie they just lie and i don't know why uh, it's it's frustrating because i think most of us grew up in an era where news was more grounded in reality but this is just pure propaganda i naturally feel like i should believe what people say that they think when they say that they think that and these emails were all about how they knew what they were saying. It was wrong all along and they were calculating it. And it's because they do know their audience. And that's very disturbing. We hear that about the people in Congress and the Senate. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, no, I mean, I mean, different than what they say. Romney uh, was interviewed by McKay Coppins of The Atlantic. He came out with the book about Romney. And I read the book. And Romney has nothing good to say about any of his Republican co-electors co or mm -hmm. people who are in Congress. Nothing. And I read this and I go, why aren't you a Democrat? But he can't go there. And I don't mm -mm. quite get it. By the way, I'm proud of this Murdoch caricature. This is <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Yeah, here's, here's one of your Murdochs. I put a few Murdochs together here. You've got Murdoch okay. pushing the escalator away for Trump to fall down. But this might have been just drawn in a moment of optimism. It was, it was. It was uh, when Trump started the latest campaign. And there were rumors that Rupert wasn't backing him. And I thought, oh, this would be one way to sort of capture it visually. And, you know, this happens. Sometimes to cartoonists, you get it all wrong. And I think it's interesting to see how Rupert may have desired to push the escalator away. But in the end, Trump owns Fox more than Rupert. And maybe Rupert, maybe that has something to do with Rupert deciding to retire. No, Rupert, no, you know, he, Rupert, sorry, Rupert. Rupert, was, Rupert uh, got it wrong because they were promoting Rupert, DeSantis. They were pushing DeSantis yeah. early on. He was the next no, guy. No, I thought that, and they thought Trump, Trump's time had passed or whatever. Yeah. And this is something about, you know, the puppet master finds out that, no, he's actually the puppet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, you know, usually when cartoonists get it wrong, it's because they're more pessimistic than they should be, I think. So uh, I, I like optimistic cartoons. <laughs> I think when Trump lost the election, I think all of them. As cartoonists that uh, well that's it we had a yeah. fun four years but uh you know we gotta you know trying to make fun of biden and we thought trump was standing in his omelet bar in mar-a-lago and i thought he was just gonna fade away but <laughs> nope he's back no nope. vengeance nope <laughs> yeah he's he's just like he's like covid he just sort of mutates Mm -hmm. And just when you think that the, we've got a vaccine and he's gonna yeah. go away and drift away he <laughs> mutates and comes back yeah stronger Here's another one of yours, Matt. It's a Hindenburg cartoon, which is another one of those wonderful cliches that cartoonists all love to draw. Everybody's drawn a Hindenburg. But, you know, the Hindenburg never gets old. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> and Rupert Murdoch says, just further proof of our continued commitment to the highest standards of air travel. You know, the, your, the, the Woody Allen voice weirdly works with Rupert. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have that many voices. That's a good one. Here's uh, Adam Ziglis. Rupert says, you need a settlement too? Uh, boy, did they have all the sexual harassment lawsuits. You know, I always think of that stuff as the tip of the iceberg, if you're going to hear about anything. So what a huge iceberg of sexual harassment must be hidden under the surface there. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, we're, we're, I'm so waiting for water because he's such mm -hmm. a creep so he knows it's going to come out i'm just i'm just waiting mm. huh. well I, I he bothers me for his smarmy arrogance and it just runs chills up my spine yeah yeah yeah, hmm. yeah it makes you it makes you miss o'reilly yeah <laughs> <laughs> I could only take him in small doses when he was on uh, O'Reilly. You know, I, I, 
but he's like Hannity and that uh, there's just, there's no substance there. So there's just like a smug meanness. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. It's, it's interesting to me that there is a lot of smugness on Fox and uh, that must be something that the audience likes. Uh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm liberal and I see some smugness on an MSNBC and I don't like the smugness. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting to me that that culture would like the smugness. I got to say, it's, I think you have to have grown up in a religious environment to really appreciate how that worked. I grew up in a very uh, rigid <laughs> religious environment. And you look to authority. You look to people who are smug, know what seem to know what they're talking about. I mean, if you look at Trump, even now, turn down the sound, he seems to be in command. And that's what people want. Well, I think and, I think you're right. And if you look at history, I think that it, it, what you're saying is is borne out by looking at you know all the strong men that that have existed from evil kings to dictators to people who control Russia today. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Exactly. Well, there's even people saying they admire Putin now. You know, and in some yeah. of the uh, even on Fox News, some of the commentators were. You know, it's uh, who'd have thought we'd ever be there. Yeah, it used to be that humility and self-deprecating humor were things that people found attractive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's one I did back in the Occupy time, and I liked the Occupy movement. They were they were largely uh, non-violent, and I thought that was fun. But Fox mm-hmm. News found the most clowns to put on TV, and mm-hmm. uh, that just struck me. So here's uh, Steve Sack, and he's got King Trump saying, "Now that's what I call a messenger." <laughs> 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 that's good yeah, Sarah that's, that's, could be. Yeah. Thought, that's awesome caricature <laughs> uh, that was wonderful I love the tongue licking his foot yeah. <laughs> Steve is great <laughs> and here we've got uh, Chris Wyand again and the principal at the school is saying we've caught your son in a series of lies we're concerned that he's headed to a career on Fox News <laughs> <laughs> I'll be making lots, lots of bucks, so the parents will be proud. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and uh, here's Monty Wolverton with the Fox News World Atlas that's ethnically sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> that's where all those people live. Sorry, Dave. You're up there with the socialists. <laughs> <laughs> Eskimo <laughs> socialists. That's what you are, Dave. <laughs> so I, I did a Mormon mission. I was a Mormon missionary in South America and Bolivia, the heart of South America. And I had to teach them how to make tacos because they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're Mexicans. As far as they're concerned, they're just Mexicans. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. They know nothing about Taco Bell. <laughs> it's true, thing. true. Okay, but this is just saying that America doesn't have a very good, accurate, informed view about the rest of the world. We're pretty insular. We don't know anything about the rest. I got to say, I watch our traffic pretty closely, both of these podcasts and who looks at the cartoons and what editors print the cartoons. And there is just fantastic disinterest in anything that happens outside of the borders of the United States. They just don't care about it. The readership Mm -hmm. drops off. I do a podcast about uh, international. I do a podcast about anything but Trump bashing, and it doesn't get much traffic. It's, oh, it's very frustrating because there's a lot of passion about those issues. You'll get mail from angry people about them, but people aren't going to look. It just kills your audience. Uh, Daryl, I would notice that too. Like if I would do a cartoon on uh, international issue, almost without fail, no matter what it was, what part of the world, and I post it on Facebook, and and I knew it was a pretty solid cartoon. It would get so few uh, likes, such little interaction from people. And and I, I know that that's why people just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. It's frustrating yeah. on these issues that you'd like for people to care about, you know, stuff like Ukraine or Israel and Palestine. People don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. They just don't want to mm-hmm. see it. Yeah. And yeah. I love, yeah. I for one love doing stuff on international events. So I think it's such a fascinating, interesting place. Place with so much going on and so many bad guys out there that it, it draws editorial cartoonists to the issues that are happening. Lots of injustice, lots of bullies mm-hmm. out there. But I it's, fair, it, uh, uh, it's true it with, the, so it's true with our international cartoonists as well. We can't get American editors to show any interest in the international cartoonists. We keep trying. And uh, internationally, it's hard for us to get uh, 
international editors to have any interest in the American card. I'm well, so old that I remember the Salt Tribune used to print just international news on the front page. You had to go into the body of the newspaper to get the rest of it. But hmm. international news was top above the fold every single day. No, no, no more. People don't care. And then also in fairness to Americans, I was going to say up here in Canada, we get mostly American TV. So that's why we know so much about what's going on down there. And we'll, we'll make you guys watch Canadian TV. Watch the CBC for the next month. <laughs> well, we syndicate Dave Wallman's work, and uh, he's a Canadian cartoonist, but we call him an American, and we put him up with the Americans on our site. We present him to the editors, and uh, we don't make a secret that he's Canadian, but since he's with the American cartoonists, I don't think the editors even think about him not being American, and he does a good job of drawing like an American. But, you know, if we put you in the other column... With the world cartoonists, even though you're drawing the same cartoons, I think hardly any of them would get printed. So, mm. so, so I, I didn't know that Dave Wemmett was uh, Canadian. Should have known this. But see, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I do draw some Canadian themed cartoons, but there's just so much stuff going on. You know, you can't help it. And it's just served up on a platter. Uh, no, I got to say you do a great job. Your, your no. stuff is wonderful. Oh, thanks a lot. I think you make a great American cartoonist, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he is American. He's just... <laughs> well, we, we, a lot of times we think we're almost the same country, right? I think, you know, we're we're very similar. I think we get all the same pop culture, everything. So well, I think you're, you're, North, you're North American, right? Yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll call it North American. Yeah. Well, sometimes, though, I think you get uh, a little bit of pushback if somebody thinks that you're criticizing America and you're not an American. Uh, yeah, mm. I can see that. I'm just I'm more thinking about the politicians themselves. You know, that's that's what I'm making the comment on. OK, well, hey, this was our last cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I think we we had a great podcast. So I, I enjoyed you guys. Thank you for being here. Yeah, that was good to, see. good to see all of you. Yeah, good to see all. Of yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. And uh, hang on to your hats for the next eight months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, hey, interesting thank you time. for coming. Remember to like and subscribe to the Kegel Cast wherever you're watching it and join our mailing list at Kegel.com. Subscribe and uh, never miss out on a new Kegel Cast. And thank you again so much, gentlemen. And I hope you'll come back sometime. Yeah, thanks very much. We'd love to. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. It, it, was like, it was like a mini convention, a mini <laughs> cartooning convention. We'll have drinks next time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I did. No, I brought my own. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Good to meet you guys. See ya. See ya.